Hello. How's everyone doing tonight? Um, we are here at the last panel of the evening. Um, I am going to be giving you a talk about Aero Lolita. Um, so yeah, first, um, you know, thank you all for participating in all the panels we've had for the last two days. Um, it's been a whirlwind of many, many things happening. And um, we're just so, we're all just so grateful when, you know, we see like all this participation and like enjoyment of like the interactive panels and like, you know, it's a really fulfilling and like, it, it fills my heart when I, when I see like that this is coming together. So thank you all so much for, you know, um, being here. Um, we do have another like three panels tomorrow morning. So if you're gonna be awake um, before the social mixer, be sure to tune into those. <laughs> Everyone here is vampires because it's so late at night, either that or you're living in Europe. <laughs> Yeah, my, my dark heart is is fulfilled. Um, and also another thing I want to talk about before we talk about our subject is, um, you know, we still have our charity drawing running. If you um, are able to either participate by donating to the Transgender Law Center or if you want to post our um, social media image to your Instagram page, um, you know, it all goes towards either raising money or raising awareness um, to make life better for other people. So that's dope. Love that for everyone. <laughs> and yeah, you can win some dope ass prizes. So that's cool. Um, you know, and uh, other things that you can do for the event is you can vote for your favorites in the chord contest. And you can also start to vote for the Garnet, um, the, the Gatoa Chateau, um, DIYs uh, once we are able to get the link for the uh, the survey. So, or not survey, the um, the form, the voting form. So that's going to happen soon. Look out for that in Discord. So um, we're here today to talk about Aero Lolita. Um, my name is Opsix Wee. Um, also go by Jessica. That's my real life name. You can call me either. You can call me Hey You. That goth bitch over there. It's fine. <laughs> um, I go by she, her pronouns, um, and I have been wearing Lolita and and um, Kuro Lolita for eight years. Um, I've only ever worn Kuro Lolita, um, and I'm I want to talk about Aero Lolita because it's kind of like a subject that is kind of it, it's it's mysterious. It's mysterious, and no one has any answers about it. <laughs> Um, so before any of this, I do want to put a disclaimer and say that everything I am going to talk about is going to be my own opinions. Um, I did do research about the topic, but it's not something, it's, it's something that most people disagree about. Um, there's, you know, you've got a whole spectrum of, uh, opinions on whether Era Lolita is even a real thing thing um, about how to properly do it. The perception of how to properly wear lo Aero Lolita has changed a lot over time um, uh, in terms of like how it's perceived in the West, how um, I, like how it may be perceived um, when it originally was a thing in Japan. So I'm just going to talk about what I think is good in terms of what I like, what is um, what I see being worn um, like today and stuff and also kind of go over why it's been so controversial. So yeah, fun. Um, so yeah, uh, so first of all, let's go over what is Aero Lolita. It is short for erotic Lolita it is more mature and a little bit more revealing um, than typical Lolita because uh, if you have been wearing Lolita, you know that typically you want to um, be a little bit more demure, like you want to be modest, you're covering up most of your body parts. Um, I Yeah, this is an old ass image. You can see that I've pulled it off of uh, EGL live journal com. Um, so it's got the Photoshop. Uh, <laughs> like logo on it. I love this image. I had it like printed out and stuff when I was like in middle school. Um, 
obviously I love the curl one, but I love these guys. Um, it's always been kind of controversial if it what if it, it's ever been a real style. Um, and I would say that most people consider it a subset of Gothic, but I would say that you can make anything arrow a little bit, a little bit scandalous, if you will. It's a little spicy, right? So thoughts about Arrow Lolita. So I went because I was trying to do a little bit more research on the subject in terms of like um it, it is is Arrow Lolita real and where did it come from? Where did it go? Something something cotton eye Joe. <laughs> um I I dug a little bit into Live Journal and found these posts about like people debating whether or not Arrow Lolita is even real. Um, you know um if the brands have made it if people in japan wear it um and so this one this uh post specifically i really like because it's talking about um like uh, where it has they they've seen mentions of era lolita in, in uh, from other sources and this post is from uh let's see i have notes here this post is from 2014, but it references a post from 2004, um, which is this fun, I, it's in another post that's called, what is Loli? And one thing to know is like, back then we called things Loli because it was okay and not terrible. Um, so everyone was calling it arrow loli <laughs> nowadays you probably couldn't say that but in this whole big ass post about like what is loli it's like um lolita is not overtly sexual unless it is arrow lolita in which case it can be right and so it th this led me back to another post which is actually from a blog um which is a really fun blog where um, it, it's, it kind of documents the experience of like this one specific Lolita who was a band girl hanging out in Japan with other band girls and what her, her, her ideas of what like Lolita substyles there were. And she writes about Aero Lolita, um, and what that is in this blog from 2005. Um, and it says Aero Lolita is Mo ma mostly a skin thing. They like corsets, black and red clothes, bondage, and black piece now in H. Nauto, right? And um, I have another um, post about the substyle um, from Lolita Handbook from 2006, um, which just talks about, let's see, I can't even see it in my own images because it's so small, so small. Um, it's an uncommon style resembling normal Lolita, but it is a little bit more revealing and often has fetish elements such as handcuffs, collars, garters, vinyl. Um, it's not super revealing. It's just that the skirts are a little bit shorter and the tops are a little bit lower cut. Um, and it can range from darker stuff you see um, in places like Torture Garden to um, stuff worn by Kana. Um, appropriate to wear in public, but meant for clubbing or going to the um, concerts. Um, it, is arrow but still re um, retains some innocence through frills and degree of modesty and it fits a more western definition of lolita in um like a sexual way but also has elegance and class it's a tough style to pull off and helps a lot um to have a lot of experience in fashion before you attempt it most of the better examples are found in art rather than life and the examples in the links, which the, those links are dead. They're, they don't, they're not a thing anymore. <laughs> um, it shows you, but I have some scans to show you, to show you what examples of Aero Lolita have been throughout time, um, that kind of thing. So um, first, let's go through um, some examples of what Lolita, Aero Lolita, Lolita has been through, um, through the brand perspective. Now, something I've been talking to um, Kelp about, and you can remember that Kelp did a panel about like street snaps, is that she um, has noted that there's a difference in what um, 
what the rules are in the Western calm versus what the rules are originally if you're talking about like Lolita in Japan. And I think the reason for that is because, you know, when we were all on live journal, um, we were, because there's so little information coming out um, and, you know, it's kind of limited to what people could translate. Um, we were trying really, really hard to kind of build these ground rules for ourselves. So we were trying to fit things into categories and make sure we were doing things right. Um, and I think that's the reason why we have such strict rules in Lolita in the Western calm. And I kind of get the feeling that maybe these rules might be a little bit more relaxed in terms of like what sub styles are what. Um, so these examples I'm showing from brands, I don't necessarily think that they, they, they may or may not be considered real Aero Lolita by the brands themselves. To the brands, they might just be regular Lolita. Um, they might just be regular Gothic Lolita. Um, but for us, because we have these like really, really strict rules in, in place of what Lolita is and what Aero is, we seen through like today's lens, consider this arrow lolita like if someone wore this today we'd be like oh that's a arrow cord um <laughs> so oh oops so we have here um the arachnophobia image which i put under brands because i wasn't sure but i guess it is a band i'm i'm also I, i'm not coming at this from a music point of view i don't know anything about the music and i'm, I'm really really sorry about this i only know about um, dumb shit, like wearing very little clothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so we have like this image on the um, left-hand side where you can see it's arrow. It would be considered arrow for today because they've got like quite a short skirt. They're, um, they're not wearing blouses. They're, um, you know, they're wearing like kind of sheer tights and platforms. And it's a little bit scandalous uh, for, <laughs> yes, I, I, I just, I, I listened to ska. Yes, it's true. <laughs> um, it, it would be considered a little bit scandalous if we wore it today. And I, um, it may or may not have been considered scandalous at the time. And um, these images are from 2005. Wait, hold on. Do, do, do. Uh, the first one is from 2002. The meta, meta ad is from 2003. And I do have a um, random moi même moitié um, one thrown in there as well. I would consider this a little bit arrow for today as well because it's like kind of a short skirt and like it's got like kind of leather detailing. So we have some more examples here um, from that are uh, H uh, not plush. Oh, arachnophobia was a brand, but Dada modeled for them. Okay, okay, that's cleared up. Thank you. Um, we've got not plush. We've got some VM, and we've got some more not plush. This is from 2006 to 2008. Um, you can see that. Um, oh, if we're going to talk about Aero OG, um, I have a couple of slides for that later. So stay tuned. Um, the shapes for these guys are not especially like the most Lolita. And that's another thing to note is like, there's a lot of, I think, crossover between um, Lolita and Gothic, which is why you have Gothic and Lolita. It's like some things are one, some things are others. There, some of it has like a little bit of crossover, which is when I have the, um, the Gothic and Lolita book. And if you look at it, some stuff is just clearly not Lolita, right? Like that doesn't, no one thinks that that is Lolita, right? <laughs> but you have things that are a little bit more like on the fence. You've got, you think you have things that are clearly Lolita. That's like, okay, that's Lolita. But some things are in the middle. And the, the, the definitions for like what is specific Lolita, I don't think are that, it, it's a little bit more um, vague, right? Plausible Lolita deniability. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So um, we have Not Plush, which is like a clear um, gothic brand. They're kind of known for doing arrow. But in the middle, we have like this image from Victorian Maiden. And they're known nowadays as a classic brand. So to have something like a little bit more spicy, you wouldn't necessarily expect. But um, 
you know, it was 2006, stuff was wild. And sometimes you rest your head in your friend's lap as a means of friendship, <laughs> right? Um, so we have some more examples of kind of more early Aero Lolita images. Um, we've got one from Mil Fleur, which is from 2009. You see her just kind of in her underwear. Um, another take on doing Aero Lolita is that you are just wearing like your bloomers and it's like, ooh, she's undressed. So while you might be dressed like head to toe in like clothing, it looks like underwear. So it's like kind of scandalous. Um, and I really love this image in the middle. It is um, the princess dress set from 2010 GLB 37. And it says, recreating the princess style worn by the likes of Arika Takarano and Nana Mizuki made especially for photo shoots. And it is made to fit standard size Japanese M. Um, and I found this one on um, Lolibrary, but I really, really love this because you don't really often see examples of Sweet Arrow, and I would consider this Sweet Arrow. Um, and you can see her platforms are really, really high. Um, and it's not necessarily the norm for what you would see for this time period, but I think it's super rad. And then kind of on like the opposite side of the spectrum, we have this other image from Jet J. Um, which is from 2012, and they're not necessarily known uh, um, as like a conventional Lolita brand. I think they kind of fall under the umbrella of classic, but they're always they've always been kind of known for like their blouseless and kind of a little bit more mature look. It's kind of like some of their stuff is more Lolita adjacent, um, and so all of their ads kind of have this a little bit like more mature, like still still more subdued, but. Um, but they, they're showing some scanty, uh, some shoulders, which is, which is, which is fun. Here's, um, here's Kana, um, who we love, um, you know, just wearing some real short skirts. These images are from, let's see, 2002. These are all images from 2002. Um, and again, I'm not coming at this from the music point of view. So, uh, I can't really say very much about the music, but these images are great and we love them. And yeah, the, the red outfit is iconic. There's also that image of her like coming out of the wardrobe, which is really great. And yeah, skirts above the knee, every, the whole skirt, I, we went, I went over this when I was doing that other panel with Simone where everyone like was like, oh, you can't show your knees. And the whole thing stems back from that one time Misako like decided that, the reason why one model or one like contest entry was picked over another contest entry was like because one of the girl's knees was showing but i think that was more in context of like that specific scenario and also because she needed a reason to say like oh why this one's first place and this one's second place it was not meant to be like you can never show your knees ever in your life and but like for a few years, we just took that and we ran with it. And somehow it became this whole thing of like, you can never show your knees in Lolita. And if you show even a single knee, then you're scandalous and that's Arrow. And I don't really necessarily think that that's the, like, I, I don't think that's the case. It's a bit silly. Um, and here we've got Takarana Arika. Um, in this really cool um, photo shoot, with, like amongst the flowers, wearing some like frilly underwear, um, as well as this other one where it's like on the right hand side, you've got like a very short skirt and it's like a little bit more um, photo shoot y, right? It's like a little bit more stage costume esque. Um, here's some lifestyle images that have also been pulled from um, GLB. One thing to note is like that they would have these ads for like underwear and stuff. And um, another thing to kind of note is like when you are buying like the GLBs, you are kind of buying into a lifestyle. They have these, um, you know, they have ads for like clothing that's not just Lolita. They have um, tutorials for cooking on how to like do, um, you know, like what a, what a Lolita would do 
in a day, like that kind of thing. And so it would, it makes a little bit of sense that they would be selling under underwear, but also it's kind of funny because we think of, a lot of people would think of Lolita as like, oh, like you can't, you can't like think about having like frilly underwear, but like GLB is like, hey, you know what you should wear? Some, some lingerie, you know? Um, and another thing is like, I feel like GLB also has never really shied away from the kind of more, I wouldn't say like sexual, but a little bit more like mature sides of things. If, if you read like their comics and stuff, those are all a, a little bit more like, they, they cover like darker subjects, um, a little bit more mature. And so this, I, I, I think that there's a misconception that Lolitas can't have, um, that they, they, they can't have the side of them, at least in the Western comms, be, um, because we've, we've had this ideology thrust upon us from like, I don't know, I think we want to disassociate ourselves from, you know, obviously the novel Lolita. And so people like want to be like, okay, there's nothing sexual whatsoever. There's like, um, you know, we, we, we don't know what sex is like, uh, th none of us have shown any skin in our lives and we are just doing this to be modest, modest gals. And I don't necessarily think that's the case. I think that if you are a Lolita and you are like a grown woman, you're allowed to like express that in your fashion, even if it is in Lolita. Um, and this is kind of a way of doing that. But also just to acknowledge that like, you know, it's, if it's if you're gonna be living your life like this, you're gonna have some oh well, like frilly underwear or, or um oh remember the um the cookies that were in the GLB where you could like bake them, but it was like some titty cookies. <laughs> if anyone remembers the titty cookies. Um and on the um left hand side, I love this because this is like advertised as room wear, but she's wearing like a freaking corset. <laughs> Um, and then on the right hand side, we have some images from like uh, the nightlife scene, like um, images from like clubbing um, and like what you would wear out that are kind of interesting examples of Aero Lolita. The cookies were the breast. Yes, they were. Okay, so um, I have a couple of street snaps to show as well. Um, these street snaps are from 2004, 2006, 2007. Um, the, um, so these are ones that I don't think, I don't know if today if we looked at it, we would necessarily consider these Aero Lolita. I think a lot of people would shy away from just wearing your petticoat out. Um, it's been a little bit more acceptable to wear just like a, cage skirt instead of a petticoat but as you can see they were doing it back in the day um and i think this would have been considered lolita back in the day um actually to note on the the image on the right hand side she's wearing almost all like moitié so you know it's not like it's not lolita <laughs> and i have um a couple more recent street snaps these images are from the first two are from 2015 those are ones that I found. Um, do I have this one? It's on the ground somewhere. Hold on. It's this volume of GLB, which is one of the only, this is like the only Japanese GLB I have. The other ones I have were scanned by Kelp. Um, but I bought this one because it's the cat edition and I like it. But, um, you know, I these these are actually, I would consider these quite recent. So I want to show you these images to say that Aero Lolita has been a thing back in the day, but also has continued to be a thing. And this most recent image um, on the right hand side is from the Tokyo Fashion website, and that's from 2018. Right. Um, so um, more examples you can see of Aero Lolita have stemmed from art. This kinds of this kind of goes back to like the idea of um, the topic of eroticism in Lolita has always been a subject that's been been explored in GLB and through Lolita artists. Um, 
obviously you've got, um, you know, the covers of the GLBs. Um, I've got this art book right here, which is the artist um, Mihara Mizu, hold on. I'm really bad at names, I am so sorry. Mitsu Kazu Mihara. And like, they're clearly supposed to be Lolita. Like you got these baby dresses right, right here. We love these. Um, but they're also like kind of scandalous. Um, and these have always been in Lolita, you know? Like you got you got your knees everywhere, you've got um some people in underwear, like this one's this one's kind of a booby shot, but there's no nipples, so it's okay. Sorry for showing you some boobs, guys. <laughs> And you've got Sakizo, of course, which is obviously I don't think that everything she draws is like straight up Lolita. Almost nothing she draws is. But Lolitas have always been very influenced by her art because of how fancy it is and how cool it is. Right. And they're 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 kind of, you know, they show some leg. They um they're very neat. Right. You can definitely see the influence there. And you've got artists like Yo um, from Yo's Monochrome World, which um, explores kind of not only um, it not only does like some of the stuff show a little bit of skin or like have arrow elements, but also explores like kind of themes of like darkness, that kind of thing. Um, and um, the last image I have is a cover drawn by Asumiko um, Nakamura um, and. Um, she's also done a lot of like comics in the GLBs that have been like ex that have been a little bit like dark and mature, and you can see like her style is also kind of the same way. Um, and I think that those are all things that have like tied strongly to the history of Lolita. Um, so here I have some images that I pull um, pulled from. Uh, live journal from back in the day. I've got uh, two images from 2008 and the other images from 2012. And these are examples of what Lolita's in the Western calm were wearing um, to be arrow back in the day. And I think the definition of what we have perceived as arrow Lolita has kind of changed since then. I think at the time we saw it a little bit more as like you're wearing Lolita undergarments, um, and but you're still kind of fancy. Um, so typically you would see people wearing bloomers, they, you would see them wearing corsets, and then you would see them like wearing a head bow, and it's like, ooh, like a little bit scandalous. Um, but it had a little bit more of an idea of like, this is undergarments that I am showing to you, rather than I want to say today, there's a lot more, um, there's a lot there's there's many more ways that ha people have expressed doing Aero Lolita um, in the Western comms since then. But these are still really cool and I still think they're really neat. Actually the one on the um the 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 two images on the left hand side are really interesting because the author wrote like a whole backstory for like this scandalous like affair that like these Lolitas were in and like their names and like you know the experiences they went through and like that kind of thing which is really fun um and i do have the slide like with links and stuff available for later so i can post that in the discord and probably the youtube um link when that's uh uploaded um so you guys can see all the um the the glbs that everything is from as well as the links that all these like blog entries are from so um finally i want to talk about oh i'm so sorry i uh didn't i, I forgot to change the slide for you guys but th these are the images i was talking about Oh no, Live Journal isn't still alive. Live Journal is uh I mean, it's it, it it's it's uh it's still there. You can still search on it. So that's fun. So, here's my opinion and this is my opinion only on how to do Arrow Lolita. Um so typically I would say 
you want to have it still be a cohesive outfit in that um, you're not just making it underwear and calling it day, uh, calling it a day, right? You want to like kind of think about still like, is this, does is this one Lolita and have Lolita elements? And what exactly are the arrow? Like, how am I pulling the arrow in? And one way you can kind of do this is to kind of choose what body parts to reveal. So I've seen this done in either a sense of um, you um, wear like a really long dress, but you have like more cleavage and you choose to showcase like this part of your body, but you cover up the rest of your body. Um, in the opposite sense, you can choose to cover up your top half where you like got long sleeves maybe even had like a high collar which i think is really fun because you're like covering that all up but you have like a really short skirt and you expose your legs um and so it's a little bit more of like concealing and revealing um another way to do this is kind of like wearing a, a um an overdress that's like completely covering your body but it's sheer so you can see the stuff underneath so it's like tantalizing right um another way of working this in is to wear undergarments but wear undergarments in a way that like is showcasing them as a part of the outfit rather than just wearing the undergarments as the outfit so you know like have it be a complete outfit but like you know make it a point to like have the corset be showcased or like have like the bloomers be revealed through like a drape or something like that. Um, I've got fetish wear here in question marks because this is something that has been a little bit, you know, it's been something that's been debated within the community. And I think there's been debates even recently on what is acceptable fetish wear to um, wear within Lolita. And um i i would want to i would like to say that like if you use your best judgment and you think about like what um what you think would be acceptable to wear in public not in the sense of like i want to please anyone in the public you, like you know if you're going grocery shopping are you going to like shock children like with something that they shouldn't be seeing right um if you're posting in the community is it acceptable for someone who is under the age of like 16 to be seeing you don't really want to be edgy for the sake of being edgy but i think there are legitimate like items that have been traditionally used in finish wear to that have since become fashion items and these are just like things like you know chokers harnesses like um leg garters that kind of thing oh yeah Mixing in PVC and latex textures is another easy way of like kind of doing this as well. Um, kind of like mixing up your textures and have it be like a little bit shiny, which is not typical in Lolita. Um, and another way you can kind of pull off Arrow Lolita is from if you just like layer and drape so that you are showing bits of body or you are, um, um, if you have like sheer fabrics that are like covering other fabrics so you can see what's underneath. I think that's really cool. So um, I have a couple of slides I've pulled from Instagram. Um, so this first one is just cage skirts. Cage skirts, everyone loves. It's a staple in Lolita. You can have them be short, you can have them be long. Um, one way, yeah, one of the, this is me, but the, uh, the rest is not me. <laughs> Um, so, uh, you can have cage skirts be a part of your outfit by having like a long overskirt that like drapes over the cage skirt, but maybe the cage skirt is, or maybe the overskirt is sheer. You can have like an especially short skirt that layers over this, um, cage skirt. You can have it be like, um, like a robe which surrounds the back of the cage skirt. If you can see the front of the legs, there's a lot of ways you can wear a cage skirt. And I would say, um, I would say get one, it's a staple. You don't have to wear one to be arrow, but it is a fun item to have. And also they pack really well because a lot of them just go do the whoop thing. <laughs> so it's easy to take places. <laughs> so yeah, um, I like this one on the 
left hand side from dead x sweetness um because it's like i think this is actually a picture of her modeling um from triple fortune and they've done a lot of arrow like kind of things as well just in their general collection but it's like a really interesting take because it's like a long cage skirt and so she's not really showing like that much but it's just the fact that it's a cage skirt layered over like you can see like the tiniest bit of thigh showing it's like oh okay that's arrow um, this other one from Marianne um, Emmanuel, <laughs> I'm not sure, I really love because of the shortness of the, the skirt over the cage skirt as well. And you can see that she's wearing like um, tights, but the tights also have like this kind of lace up element. So that makes it kind of arrow. This other one that um, this is me, um, I wore this for going out like clubbing or like for a night out. So I was like, okay, this is like acceptable to wear like in the evening, it's fine. Um, but you can see like I've covered up the back half and then you can only like see the cage from the front. And this other one from Yanni, um, you can see like she's wearing like a sheer over layer over her cage skirt with her bare legs, which is very scandalous. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know what, what what's France. Um, here's another um, here's another set of examples, and these are all um, examples of short dresses in Aero Lolita. Um, something that you can do is just wear a really short skirt, and that's kind of scandalous, even though it's like the same um, length as like on a normal ass mini skirt. If you wear it with that's like a full dressed up cord, somehow it's like a little bit more tantalizing. Obviously, we can never um, leave out Tommy when it comes to talking about Arrow Lolita. She is our OG um, Arrow queen. And in this one, I believe she is wearing, um, she's wearing Antique Beast. Um, and you can see that she's just got like a little bit shorter of a skirt, um, but she's also like not got a blouse on and just kind of revealing in that way. Um, I really love this image from Dolly Momoriro. Um, because she's got a short skirt, but you, you, this like super long dramatic train in the back. So you can't see anything, like you can't see skin from the back, but you can see like she's got like the long, um, the tall uh, stockings, um, as well as like the triple fortune headdress. Um, this other image from things that we, um, things we never did. Um, she's dressed up in the hospitality doll dress, um, which has a quite a short skirt. And so even though she has, um, well, you can't see in this picture specifically because she's covering the front of it with the bag. Um, you know, her her tights go all the way up. You can't see any skin, but because it's like a shorter silhouette of skirt, it's kind of, and also because it has like the nurse motif, that makes it a little bit more arrow, as well as this um, image from Josine, um, because she's got, kind of got the layer of sheer tight with an o OTK um, together with the miniskirt. Um, so these are images, kind of examples using harnesses. You can see another image from me. Um, I am wearing um, a harness. It's not even really a harness. It's like a bra that's got X's in the front underneath uh, another dress that's underneath a skirt that has some leather detailing, <laughs> which goes back to the whole like layering thing. If you layer th sheer things over each other, it kind of has a cool effect like that covers you up, but also allows you to reveal some skin. This other um, image from Josine, I really, really love because it's kind of like a really classic, like old school look, but she's like kind of dressed up to have this like a little bit more elaborate of a harness um with like the chains like and that makes it like a very cool silhouette um again with like a little bit more short of a skirt and um both mercades and isis stardust they they both do this thing where they wear like a really long uh, long dress um but they'll like have like a kind of like detail over here that's kind of harnessed like underneath so you can see a little bit of skin just at the chest um and it's not like it's not like a ton of cleavage but the fact that it's there makes it more arrow. Um, here we've got a slide of, I'm so sorry that I'm, I, I used myself for a lot of these slides, mostly because it's just easy to pull images of me. Sorry guys. <laughs> um, this is kind of examples of leather detail in Arrow Lolita. 
Um, you can see this image from butt cape. It's a little bit scandalous because it's got the shoulder showing as well as like the sheer sleeve, but also it's got like the leather um, boussier. And so that makes that like kind of makes it pop a little bit. Um, this other image in the middle from Mysterious Condiments, he's got like this um, belt corsety thingy in the middle. So even though from like neck to like freaking ankle, um, he's completely covered up. The fact that like there's so many sheer elements plus this element of like leather plus like having like ears, which is like a little bit, just a little bit fetishy. Um, makes it kind of pushes it in the arrow direction, right? Um, and this one from me on the right hand side um, is a nurse outfit that I wore like maybe three years ago. I know I am wearing the mask incorrectly. Do not at me. This was before coronavirus. Um, <laughs> um, but it's like kind of a, it's kind of like a nurse outfit. So again, with like a little bit of a fetish element, but it's also a meta um, leather dress or so like a pleather dress. Um, so it's got like this um, kind of textural um, kind of element as well as again, as with the last slide with Josine layering like OTKs over a sheer sock, um, that kind of, I don't know, for some reason layering socks over socks, you wouldn't necessarily think like, oh, that's so sexy, but somehow it looks like it when you do it. <laughs> um, oh, and you can see like all of us are wearing platforms because that's also a staple. Get yourself some platforms. You can just stand to them. It's fine. You don't need to walk. Um, here's some other examples that are a little bit more um, sweet or classic. Um, we have this one from Petit Payaf. Um, which is a little bit more recent of one kind of inspired by um, like uh, historical films that have, or shows that have appeared recently. Um, but it's got a little bit more like that underwear vibe and that kind of brings it into the more arrow um, kind of territory. So it's got, you've got like the kind of chemise looking top with like a bare shoulder, but it's not just wearing underwear. It still looks like a complete outfit. Um, Fanny Rosie, who is of course an icon and we all love, um, you don't typically see her in this much like of a scandalous outfit, but I believe this is for a show. And so she's got her shoulders being revealed as well as a sheer tight. Um, and you've got Choco Nokcha. I get messed up because there's so many O's, Choco Nokcha. <laughs> but this is, Kind of a more typical sweet Lolita outfit, but because she's not wearing a blouse and she's got like a little bit more of like showing at the chest region, um, it reads a little bit more arrow as well. And I really love that it's like a little bit more colorful. That's really fun. Um, here's examples of more sweet Lolita um, cords that are arrow um, involving cage skirts. You've got um, Dead X Sweetness again, who is wearing like bunny ears, bringing back like the whole animal ears, kind of tied a little bit together with arrow um, with a, a little bit more interesting of a um, cage skirt because this one's got like ruffles on it, which is really fun. Um, you've got I Am Woman King with like a longer cage skirt um, with like a peignoir and like a really, really cool hat and it's like a really cool. Um, example of like OTT arrow. And obviously you've got Lacey Crown who entered this outfit in the um, fashion walk from today. Um, she's wearing a cage skirt that she's like decorated with flowers and has like a train and she's also got like her pleasers on. Um, so it makes her very tall. We love it. And of course, Mindy's outfit from the um, uh, fashion walk today as well. Um, she's got like a little bit more innocent of an arrow look in that like she can hide the cage skirt but she can also like reveal it and you can see like oh like she's got bloomers and like there's so many sheer elements so um, uh, like just having these layers kind of is a little bit more arrow. Um, and another thing I want to note is that you don't, one, you don't always need to wear a cage skirt. Two, it doesn't always need to be like overtly like, oh, like I'm showing so much skin or, um, you know, it can be a little bit more casual than that. Um, so these are some examples that I have 
um, that I like want to point out as like a little bit more of like, I, I won't, I don't know if necessarily casual arrow is a thing, but um, these are a little bit like, I want to say like less obvious, but still have arrow elements. Um, this one from Dark X Delirium, you can see she's not wearing a blouse, but she is wearing like, I kind of, I wanted to vibe with that today. So I also put on arm warmers, <laughs> but like just having like this bit of skin showing right here. Um, I think just having like peaks of skin is like very arrow as well as um, Ophelia over here. She's not wearing a blouse and you can see some more thigh. So even though she's not wearing anything like overtly, um, like nothing fetishy, nothing that's like, looks like underwear, but she does have like, a short skirt and she's got her shoulders showing. So that pushes it in their direction. And you can see this image from me, it's just literally not wearing a blouse. That's it. But it's like a Tilly Piro and it's got like the um, kind of corset lacing in the front um, and like kind of sheer stocking. So. Also a little bit more arrow. It's just casual arrow, no big deal. <laughs> um, here is, I know someone um, in the chat was asking about um, arrow G, um, which I hadn't even thought about, but when I asked um, Mysterious Condiments um, if I could use one of his um, outfits uh, previously, he was also like, oh, I also made an arrow G outfit. And I was like, I never even thought about that. <laughs> so he showed me these two ones and I think they're really cool this one on the left hand side um kind of has like a little bit of the fetishy elements in terms of like this harness on the pants and this one on the right has like uses the um the sheer blouse to kind of like be a little bit more revealing but again you can see he's wearing like clothes from his neck all the way down to his toes <laughs> Um, and I want to also give you some brands to um, look up um, if you want to buy things that are Aero Lolita. Um, something that I want to talk about in terms of Aero is that you don't need to shop at any certain place and there's no item that you need to have in order to be arrow there are things that are element like have elements of arrow so if you buy like harnesses if you buy like corsets or chokers or cage skirts or whatever those are all things that have an element arrow but you don't have to have these things or and you don't need to go to certain brands in order to achieve the look and you can see that that you can see that pretty clearly from like the examples that i've shown um but these are brands that have like been known to put out these kinds of um items. So the first one is Mr. Corset. They are, I believe, a little bit newer of a brand. Um, they have like a lot of lacy dresses, but they always like pair it with like a corset and it's like very layered and they've got like these angel wings, which are really cool. And they have like all different um, heights and or heights, lengths <laughs> of, um, of corsets that you can choose from. Um, Abilitage, they do lots of things with corset lacing as well. They're known for like their neck corsets. Um, you can see that this image they have, which is like a shop girl image, is also paired with like um, garters, which um, pretty scandalous and I love that styling. They also sell um, like kind of waist cinchers that have like a lot of corset lacing on them as well as um, they're known for their tights, the printed ones that have like a lace up like printed detail. Um, but, um, let's see. And oops, um, Atelier Pero, um, no, normally as like just a regular gothic brand, but they do make um, lots of stuff with again corset lacing. Um, but also they make a lot of like mini dresses and mini skirts. So if you want to go for a short, like a bit shorter length of dress, those are probably though that's probably a brand that you go to to be a little bit more scandalous in the leg area. Um, Antique Beast. Um, they are known for their more gothy, shorter length dresses as well. Um, I hope they're doing okay because they have not opened. They have not been open for like a year, which is very understandable, but just one person. And I hope she's doing good. That's it. <laughs> Na Plesh, which is they do some Lolita stuff and they do some just regular gothic stuff. Recently, they put out these like PVC um dresses and i think they're so cool i think they're great um and they, these came with like also like a legging and like a like a choker and like arm warmers that were all like pvc <laughs> um 
and Mouflu, Mouflu and Milnor. I don't know how to pronounce French, <laughs> but they they have. You can see that the um, the bodice here is a little bit more of a traditional um, corset closure. It's not just like a lace up like decorative. It's got like a basque and stuff, so that pushes it a little bit more in the underwear direction. And you can wear this without a blouse, and you can show your shoulders. You'd be like, oh look, it's my shoulder. Ooh, right. <laughs> Um, but if you're looking at their their gother their gothier brand, which is Mille Noir, um, th that has a lot of more um, gothic elements, um, and they use like um, kind of like leathery looking stuff and like um, O rings and um, like kind of more strappy looking stuff. And they also, I believe, carry, carry um, cage skirts, so they're a good resource to go to if you're looking for kind of classic or gothic arrow. Um, Millie Flow, yeah, that's the um, Millie Flow. Um, okay, and also um, we have Triple Fortune. They again have put out like these long cage skirts as well, and that's really fun. As well as Dangerous Nude, they are known for their corsets and they can custom make them, I believe. Um, but also, don't Google search dangerous nude as like an image search don't do that i made that mistake you're not going to find this brand if you just search that in images you'll get something else that's all <laughs> um some indie brands that you can shop with um for cage skirt skirts specifically um the black ribbon has consistently ca carried cage skirts mine is from her um and it's an easy peasy one to just have and wear with anything. She has also done like um, sheer overdresses that are like completely lace. Those are really fun. Tour New Soul carries this like really elaborate um, like floral one, which is really great. Um, and Fan Plus Friend, if you go into like their underwear section, they have like a whole range of different kinds of cage skirts to choose from, as well as like bustles and over skirts that are like sheer. And those are really, really cool. Um, and I'm, you know, if you want like different styles of like underpinnings to wear with your Aero Lolita, I would say they're a pretty good resource for that. Um, I do declare who has not really put out stuff that's necessarily like the most Lolita recently, but has always been, you know, like has started out in Lolita and has always been Lolita adjacent, puts out these great overdresses, or you can also wear them as underdresses. That's the great thing about having sheer dresses is you can wear as a blouse. You can wear as like an in-between layer. You can wear as like an overdress over your, you know, scandalous underwear, right? Um, so you can get, she, she makes them in like in mesh. She's got like lace mm -hmm. ones. Um, and if you get like a longer length, then it kind of like is able to cover you all the way, but you can still wear something scandalous underneath. Um, Pop Princess recently put out, um, you know, with this most recent collection, a bunch of, uh, sweet Lolita and classic Lolita and, um, gothic Lolita inspired lingerie sets. And these are really, really cool. And she also, um, has consistently carried these like neck corsets. Um, and I bought one, like the black one recently, and it's so sturdy and like well-made and good. And I love it. Um, it, it makes me feel very, um, rigid in my neck. Like I am like, oh, like I... I'm up here, <laughs> you know, but it's very, it's very well constructed. Um, Agato Designs has stuff that is like also very um, arrow. She's got like these harnesses that go over the sheer dress. And she also have like the um, Shibari um, inspired like um, harnesses as well that you can wear over something um, as well as like these cool like animal plush bags that have been tied up in Shibari as well. And those are really cool. Um, raspberry ma mazohist um, is not necessarily like a, a Lolita brand. They are they do um, accessories, um, and but but they're very visual K inspired and has he's put out um, like specifically gothic Lolita inspired like uh, latex um, headdresses and chokers like with bows on them and stuff. But I, I know a lot of people have gotten like these giant cross um, chokers as well because they cover a lot of like area and they're very OTT and it can like really help like elevate an outfit and it's very fun. Um, 
So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I talked a lot and I can't believe that that has been almost an hour. These are all of the um, Instagram accounts that I referenced. So if you want to check any of these out, um, you can please follow them on their accounts. Um, I will be posting the um, slideshow in the Discord and it will also be available once we post um, the video on YouTube. Um, I want to especially shout out Kelp for helping me source these GLB images. She went through and actually like scanned them because she has them in her house and also her mom helped. So thank you Kelp's mom um, for scan scanning some, some scanty ladies for me. <laughs> um, and that's kind of it. I've got four minutes left technically, although I could go on, you know, if you want me to answer questions and stuff. So does anyone have any questions? Oh, I'm looking like kind of messy. I wanted to do like an 80s hair thing, but my hair keeps falling down. <laughs> What's my favorite dead arrow brand? Um, I guess, let's see. Eccentric, of course, used to do really, really good corsets. So F in the chat for Eccentric. Um, H Nauto really doesn't do Lolita adjacent stuff anymore. I checked out their site and like they don't, I, I don't know if they have frill, but they used to be someone like that consistently used to put like cage skirts and like petticoats and stuff. And I didn't see, anything from H. Nauto that was like that, um, you know? So that that was, I don't know, sad, I guess. But I don't know if this is the case like forever, ever, or if it was just like, I happened to look at it at the wrong time. <laughs> oh, thanks. This veil is, this veil is from um, Triple Fortune. And I don't really wear it often, but it does go well with big hair. Oh, the correct answer. Oh yeah, BPN. Yeah, I know. BPN, yeah. <laughs> there's just, I. it's, yeah, there's a lot of like dead um, uh, gothic brands anyway, and it's very sad. Yeah. My, I think my first items that I've bought um, from like Japanese brands was probably from like H. Nato and BPN because I, before I got into, before I started being a Lolita, like officially, um, we, besides the baby store in SF, we also had a first a BPN and then an H and Alto. And I didn't think I was ever going to wear Lolita. So I was like, oh, I'll just buy like this, this other gothy shit instead. Surprise turned into a Lolita, but I still have like the, um, the BPN stuff. <laughs> What's the tallest shoes I've ever worn with an arrow look? Um, I believe I've got six inch platforms. Um, I'm gonna say they're either six inch or seven inch. They're they're pleasers and they don't leave the house. Um, but I do, I have worn them a lot for cords for tea parties in, in the house because we've been at we've been in pandemic for so long that I just sit around in fucking platforms and it's fine. Um, no, we don't have we don't have the same ones. I've got um like a strappier, like it's not a boot. I need to get what I need to do is get a platform boot but I haven't done that yet. I just, I just have like the strappy guys. Um, Demonias, no, I don't, I don't have any, I, I think I, I don't know, I don't, Demonias, I feel like I stomp too hard and would ruin them, I'm not sure. <laughs> Let's get big boots. Yeah, I let's get big boots. Let's do it. I want I want to get the I want to get the thigh high pleasers. Oh yeah, antenna. Um, they do custom stuff too, right? <laughs> I think so. You could technically you could probably get them to make heels and platforms as like tall as you wanted because they do they do custom. Yeah, Ariana Grande K. <laughs> Oh yeah, Madeline, as soon as you said that, people were like, no, and they went to sleep. <laughs> well, if I don't have any questions, um, we can end the stream here. I think I still have 
um, social media posts to make for to get ready for tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is also the mixer. Um, so we're going to be hanging out in Discord and chatting. I'm going to be helping mod the spooky, the spooky chat. Um, so come hang out if you want to, I don't know, shuffle around in the dark, waving our arms. It'll be fun. Oh, bad question because it happened in the first five minutes. Uh, what happened in the first five minutes? I don't know what did happen in the first five minutes. I think I just talked about like why Arrow is controversial. Um, because no one's ever agreed on what it is or what's the right way to wear it. And so all of the all of the um things I said today are just my opinion. Um, and you don't have to listen to me. This is just my hot take. <laughs> but you know, feel free to interpret it how you want. I think should be your takeaway. If you decide that something like is arrow to you, wear it that way. Um, if you don't want to wear fetish stuff or you like don't want to go like that far, you don't have to. Um, but I I would say, you know, if you had like if you had like a maybe a more closed-minded perception of what arrow is, maybe like consider like Consider that there are other options and that's they're and they're fun and they're legitimate. And I like it. <laughs> titty windows is better than titty pillows. Yes. Well, maybe. Depends. Well, if you if you want to go sleep, maybe a titty pillow would be good. Oh, Narcissique Couture is an indie Lolita brand that has a vinyl skirt and nun collar. I did see that. Those are very cool looking. I, I think they have an Etsy, so go check those guys out on Etsy. Okay, um, I'm gonna go and work on some stuff. <laughs> but thank you all so much for showing up. I can't believe there's a bunch of you just listening to me talk about scantily clad ladies <laughs> um, and ladies and, and other people, I, I should say, because we did have some examples of, you know, ROG and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow um, if you're coming to the mixer. And don't forget to vote for your the chords and the chord contest. Um, don't forget to come to the um, closing ceremony. We'll we'll, we'll be announcing um, you know future events that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Good night, y'all. Bye.